Michael came up with Light Man. I think Michael Cotton named him. Michael wanted a, a, an opening to the show um, that was unique. Out of a number of, of meetings, uh, uh, you know, collaborative sessions, um, you know, I, I remember him talking about, you know, uh, um, was there a way to begin, you know, with an, with an awesome sort of video experience that then transferred to his body? And could he carry the light and magic of visual imagery onto his body? Most incredible idea. We, you know, looked all around. There is no such material. There was no way to create a suit, a wearable suit covered with video lights that was any good. I mean, you can put lights in a suit. He'd been doing that for years, too. He'd had electrified costumes for 20 years. But to put a coherent video image on a piece of clothing was a big challenge. So it got to the point where there was no one in the world who could build such a thing in one month's time. But I did show him an idea for something called Light Man, which was a suit of lights like a suit of armor. And people may know he really loved that sort of thing. Well, the original concept was a silver orb about eight foot diameter was going to lower down from the stage and it would, it would land on the stage and then would open up and reveal the light man within it. For technical reasons, the production of light man changed to actually where it would appear from below the stage and kind of rise up out of the stage. We had a ramp that opened up at the center stage, which we called our garage door, and that out of the black, Michael was gonna come free floating straight toward the audience down to the edge of the stage, uh, floating in this figure with video imagery wrapping around him. And, and, and then at one point, uh, uh, the imagery would grow to a bright white light and then piece by piece by piece by piece, this would open and Michael would jump down and we would start the show. When we realized that we couldn't just plug LEDs into a pre-existing fabric suit, I came to David and his company Show Effects to find out how the heck we could do this. This is a flexible LED panel that uh, is definitely new, definitely different. There's about two companies in the world making this product right now. The very unique thing about this is how easy it is to shape around different corners and different uh, styles so that you can actually go around a corner, go uh, up underneath in, in uh, concave or convex patterns with, with LED. And that just set our minds to work. We thought, okay, we started forming it around the body. And you could see that, yeah, you could make a suit out of this. This is amazing. This, this, is, this is a really fun project. About halfway through building this on the floor, before we even put it on the light man, we started to see how it was all taking shape, and that's when everybody got very excited. Our first task was to help Michael create the uh, scale model that would be shown to Michael Jackson. This is the maquette that was sculpted prior to building the, the full-size version. This was done so that Michael Cotton and Kenny and, and MJ could all decide on a pose and confirm that this is the shape we want it to be. And Michael's vision of it was that it was to be like Michelangelo's David. So hence the kind of semi-Roman statue pose here. And then one by one, panels would open to reveal parts of his body at his cue. So he would reveal first his leg, shin, chest, helmet, and even the codpiece. He was definitely interested in holding the tension on this for as long as he could. He talked about staying in here. He would kind of act this out on stage. You wouldn't have seen any of this because we've been covered with the video panels. And then the areas that were not covered with video panels were to have chrome uh, decorative elements, sort of chrome bezels. The, the hand would have been the chrome finish as well. He did see this, but never with the pieces working. As David said, that's where we got it to, and we were gonna show him a couple of days uh, later. But this is as far as we got. Hopefully we will finish it one day. We were a few days out from being able to actually cover the entire body and have it function when the news broke that Michael had been taken to the hospital. Within a very short time, a couple hours that afternoon, we realized that this project wasn't gonna go any further nor were any of the other pieces that we were working on. In fact, we had a, uh, a truck full of equipment getting ready to go over to Staples. Um, so it was a, it was a real uh, uh, surreal sort of afternoon for us when we realized that Light Man wasn't going to ever see the stage. Woo!
Yeah. What day is it? What time is it? Okay. We're like, you know, we're down to the wire. We're like halfway through our film shoot for all of our incredible new film content for This Is It. We are at Culver City sound stages. Uh, in fact, this is the home of Thriller and and and, uh, and Smooth Criminal. This is where Michael uh, and, and his wonderful, talented, creative team and dancers did uh, those two incredible works of art. And we're now here doing new film content for the show. What I remember most, because it crossed over to working, being part of this is it tour was Michael was so involved in every aspect of the production. This is your slide to Mark. Okay. okay. Turn around, Mark. And then once you do this, then you'd be. Uh, I got involved with this project and start, it started with a phone call from Michael Cotton, the production designer. Uh, Michael called me and he told me that he was involved with the, the Michael Jackson This Is It concert tour and he asked me if I'd be available to come to a meeting with Kenny Ortega. We went into a room and myself, Michael Cotton, Kenny Ortega, and Michael Jackson sat at a table and Michael Jackson spent the next 12 hours describing everything visual that was supposed to happen at the This Is It concert in London. There were pieces that we did that, uh, uh, although were huge, huge successes as short films, that he thought were fun to refresh without throwing out the integrity of, of what they once meant, but that there were some fresh new ideas that, that kept them, you know, fun and, and, and stimulated. And, and so Smooth Criminal was one of those. Smooth Criminal had a story already with it, you know, that came from long ago. The hard part was realizing this vintage look. It was really fun and easy in a brief meeting to say, let's have Michael interact with the great gangsters of the period. But boy, to get that footage and make it work and uh, you'll see it looks fantastic we would try film after film and and or it'd be a licensing issue well you can't have that the most important thing of course is with this technology of throwing somebody into an old movie that michael just wants to make sure that it's seamless that you really feel that he is in that speeding and gilda singing and beautiful Looking at you, she wants you. She takes off that glove and she throws it to you. So we're placing them in the scenes, and then of course, cuts with and cut. <laughs> that was a good That's one. That's cut. Clearly, yeah, Michael's the guy that catches the glove from the pretty girl, and the other guys don't like it, so the chase is on. After he runs into the uh -huh. rooftop, we want to get him down one floor into this. Beautiful. Room. So he's going to come down with a, a winding staircase. No, it's a little more simple than that. So, so Mike, he would come through that door, opens the door, comes down the stairs, and however he wants to do. Stop. It. Roll it. And the way we do that is through shooting him in a manner that, that matches into the action of the film. If, if there's a staircase in the film, we have to build a green screen staircase that's, that's shaped geometrically exactly like the one in the film. So we really had to go to great lengths, not only to find these clips, but then build the sets. Okay. But we chose at the end not to actually have, even let him know we were going to do that because Kenny knew for a fact. Uh, the recoil from the 38, which is what this is, yes. it's pretty slight for a guy who used it. It's going to be more like Michael Jackson was a very detail-oriented person. You know, Michael was very savvy. He had done so many films, as you know, over the years. All of that. Coordinator, coordinator. Is he just here to say in case anybody trips or anything? You know, Michael's a filmmaker. You know, really, he is a storyteller. He would have been a very talented director. Hey, Mickey. Yeah. Uh, if Michael yeah. goes like yeah. this, so put your hands up. Michael really had the vision in his head, and, and it was up to us as the producers carrying out that vision to, to realize it in the manner that he described it. He was a very good communicator. He was concerned about the lighting, and the sets, and the movement, and it was just amazing to watch him. Okay, Bruce. Yes, sir. Rehearsed and Michael was great. We can do this. Are you ready to shoot? Yep. Okay, guys, let's shoot this up. All right, here we go. Ready? We are rolling. Rolling. Stand by and action. Bogey. On the tour, we'd be seeing this on this 100 by 
30-foot screen. Then there's a moment and Michael stands up on the Michael Bush for 31 years as a costume designer, but also loved fashion and design. And this time around, we brought in a wonderful new young designer out of New York named Zaldi. And both Michael Bush and Zaldi created all of Michael's new costume ideas. I got a call from Travis and Christopher, and they said, oh, would you, um, would you uh, want to design some things for the Michael Jackson tour, which I, of course, said is not even a question. It's like, of course, I'll do whatever it is that you want. We had about two months to complete the these outfits, you know, plus their doubles. So everyone was like, oh my God, it's, you're crazy. And then, you know, as soon as I heard that they were for Michael, everyone was like, you know, we're gonna stop everything and do, do this for Michael. This was the opening uh, look for the tour, um, uh, where he was coming out of a nine foot robot to start in something. I mean, the whole idea of uh, the robot and space and everything, I mean, it's kind of looks like a spacesuit, I guess. It's very futuristic. It's like a head-to-toe solid Swarovski crystal and lucite outfit, you know? There was like the shoulders and all the pieces and the shoes were custom made. We had uh, sunglasses that were, he was gonna wear as well. Zelda used crystals in ways that I've never seen before. The molds that he made for the crystals for the suit and then the way he had the appliques for the crystal to go along with the twill of the fabric. Even Nadia Swarovski hasn't seen that. If Swarovski hasn't seen it, then the, you know, the world hasn't seen it. It may be the most Swarovski crystals that I've ever used in one complete look. Three million individual crystals throughout the whole thing, or like 300,000, I can't remember, but there's a lot. But it's literally dipped in crystals, so. <laughs> I have no idea what this cost is. It's a lot, that's all I have to say. There were millions of dollars worth of crystals designed especially for Michael's clothing. People would say that if you were gonna go in and look at the work in progress, you had to wear sunglasses because the crystals bounced off so much light that you couldn't see the garment. Like anything that's on the cutting edge of technology is what Michael's about, so. You know, I mean, that was just my task in my head. I was like, what can I bring him and how can I bring it in a different way? The shoulders were a last minute thing. It's like, they're not even in my final sketch. So, you know, and Michael kept saying, the shoulders, the shoulders, the shoulders, are, the shoulders are so important, you know, throughout the whole thing. So I just had an idea. I was like, let's make these huge. He looked at them, thought they were heavy, and then he picked them up and he was so excited. He's like, they look heavy, but they're light. He was so happy because they're hollow. Michael's just, to find so many iconic style moments that all it really needs to do is like use what he already has established and then just bring it into modern time, you know, like bring it up to date. He uh, got to try the pants on and he got to try the shoulders on, which brought a huge smile to his face. This uh, suit was going to be for the J5 medley. I wanted to do this sort of like a dip dye, or something that looked like a dip dye of uh, bugle beads and uh, some crystals and stuff like that. It's on the shoulders, and then we have it also on the waistband. For the shoes for this outfit, you know, Michael's like, I love spats, I love spats, and I was like, hmm, for this one, let's do spats. So the original prototype for, for this outfit was a boot with the spats that were built in. But we found that they were too rigid. He was really hard to get into, hard for him to bend. Um, so I decided, let's just take the loafer and we'll add a spat to it that's kind of very flexible. And uh, we just come in from the back and slide into it like you're wearing loafers. Um, a lot of the pants that I did have zippers all the way down the sides. So, you know, they're easy to take off. For example, the shirt is just Velcroed up the back, you know, so. No buttony, no none of that stuff. This piece was for black or white. I wanted it to be kind of hard, you know, um, very a strong kind of message. So I started to look into uh, samurai uh, outfits and kind of came across, I think. I guess it's pretty powerful because it is so heavy with studding, you know. I think it weighs about 10 pounds, you know, so it's kind of heavy. Um, it was originally going to close and I thought like, he's never going to be able to get into unbuttoning the jacket. So I just was like, I like that, <laughs> you know, and I showed it to him in a muslin and he really loved it too. So the studying uh, was pretty complete. It's like we went all the way down into studded loafers and I was looking at his feet and I was like, 
are those the same loafers that you've been wearing for like forever? And he's like, no, I have like a hundred pairs of them. He's like, they're the only shoes that I can dance in. And I was just like, nobody's made you shoes before? I'm like, I am gonna make you shoes. And when I talked to the factory, I just said, they have to fit the exact same way on the inside. You know, he needs to feel like he's wearing his old loafers. I wanted to make sure that he didn't know he had a different shoe on. And we had one of Michael's shoes and the factory in Italy, they're like, we do not want to do this, but can we please cut one of the shoes open so that we can make sure that the entire insides are fully analyzed and um, the fit is perfect. So that's how we, that's what they did. <laughs> We didn't want to stray away from the shape too much, but I just wanted to do a, a, a much smaller and refined sequin than the original. I was just thinking and thinking, and I was just like, God, wouldn't it be amazing if Billie Jean lit up the way that the sidewalk did in the video? So I started to do tons of research, and I saw one thing which was from Philips Technology, and they seem to be the most advanced in this field. So. I called them and of course they came back and said, we would love to work on this outfit with Michael and you. Michael was always looking for the next breakthrough idea. He would send us out into the world and say, you know, come back with ideas. What new things are happening? I mean, the costume designers were working with scientists. There was new, you know, electronic technology woven into fabrics. What's so amazing what Philips can do is like, it can do any RGB color that's on your computer, so a million different color, and any color combination, any pattern, any pulse, any kind of um, uh, rhythm that you wanted to have. And um, what was gonna happen first was the socks were gonna light up, and then it was gonna come up through the tuxedo stripe, and then it was gonna come up at another point through a stripe that we put through the jacket and underneath, and then come off into his glove. Basically, the way that you made it work was somebody had a remote control like you were playing a Wii game. And you could basically tell it to change colors to rainbow or to be white or to, to pulse, you know. And each piece works by itself, but can be controlled within one unit. It being programmed to the choreography or to do it um, manually. I know that uh, his favorite part was when it went kind of like through a rainbow color and then just pulsed really bright, you know, like, so that was probably gonna be in there quite a bit. But, you know, there were moments where, you know, a light was in the sock and would like rapidly come up through the leg, through the jacket and out through his hand, you know, like there's a gesture that he does when he's kind of points up into the sky. That thriller was gonna be really easy to do, but it actually turned out to be the hardest one for me because it is such an iconic jacket and I didn't want to take it too far away, but yet I didn't want it to be, I wanted it to be really fresh. I was looking about at the, the quilting that's on the, you normally that was on the shoulders, and I was just like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And I was just like, I know, I know, I'll do blood. I'll just do like embroidered blood. And I told Michael, he's like, oh, I like it. These might have been one of his basic pants, which are um, another Swarovski crystal lized pants with, um, I call them the germ mask pants because I was like, Michael, do you mind? I'm like, I want to put a germ mask on your knee. You know, I'm like, you own that mask. Let's have more fun with it, you know, and he loved the idea. I was going to propose these red and black uh, loafers, but, uh, you know, we had also, you know, three different kinds of black loafers that he would be able to choose from. And Michael got to see uh, the t-shirt, actually. Um, he got to try it on with uh, some of the outfits. It's the MJ logo again, but uh, just in the outline of all the Swarovski crystals. One of the hidden secrets that I had for Michael too was a special lining for Thriller, which unfortunately he didn't get to see, but it is the a Thriller wolf uh, biting a Swarovski crystal, which I think he would have loved, you know. Yeah, which was gonna be Man in the Mirror. And um, it was the one place where I thought, you know, we have to do a traditional Michael military look, but in kind of a new way. So I sort of came up with this, a little sample where we really just put layers and layers and layers and build up this kind of mass of Swarovski crystals. And I showed him this sample and he was just like, <laughs> he was holding it up into light, just saying like, it's like a secret treasure. It's like a hidden treasure. And then the big surprise for him was that I, I sort of built them into this waistband, which really nobody really would see, you know, you get little glimpses of it. 
If you turn profile, you really wouldn't see that it was a heavily beaded jacket. It would just sort of be like a secret treasure that would be revealed. You know, there are secrets under here, um, the shoulders, which look just like kind of built up shoulders, but if you look inside, it's completely stacked also, as is the collar. Shame that people were not able to see his complete vision, you know, which would have been him in the outfits in the full staging of the shows. But, you know, with what we have, you can kind of piece together, you know, in your imagination what it would look like.